Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. In today's show, we're going to learn all about strike indicators. These useful tools are an incredible means for anglers to detect takes by fish. From fast flowing rivers to still waters, strike indicators are one of your best tools for catching fish under differing conditions. Stay with us, this is going to be a fascinating show. That was awesome. Let him go back to live another day. These are extremely strong fish. Here you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish. Good fish. Yes. Got him. Yeah! Oh, well record. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got a perfect. example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very flat. Sweet music. Sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. Some anglers look down on the use of indicators, often referring to them as bobbers. They're missing out on using one of the most effective tools a fly fisher can have. It is sad that often fly fishers impose a set of handicaps that hinders their ability to catch fish in all conditions. Strike indicators are truly essential tools for competent anglers to have at their disposal. So what is a strike indicator? A strike indicator is considered anything that can be attached to the leader to let the angler know that the drift of a sunken fly has been intercepted by a feeding fish. The device that is used to signal the take and help suspend the offering can be a number of items such as yarn, cork, foam, or even a large dry fly. However, the defining characteristics of an indicator are that it should float, be strong enough to suspend the offering at the desired depth, and it should be visible to the angler. Strike indicators are great because they help you to be the best nymph fisherman you can possibly be in a wide range of conditions. They improve the visibility of your leader, track the drift of your flies, and pick up those subtle hits that you might otherwise miss. This is critical when takes are very subtle. Of equal importance, they increase your reaction time so that you hook fewer fish deeply, allowing you to release them unharmed, an important consideration for catch and release anglers. In the West, both in Canada and the United States, strike indicators are considered standard fare on most water systems. In fact, many guides consider them essential tools for ensuring their clients will hook into fish. On the North Platte River in Wyoming, nymphing with strike indicators is considered critical to success for much of the season given the water conditions there. We joined experienced guide and outfitter Brett Van Riesenhaller, who explained how they rig on that system to nymph for big rainbow trout. Okay, he was right there downstream of that rock again. I changed over and went to the deeper rig. I, I set up what's called a, a hinge rig. Basically a hinge rig is about two or three feet of butt section to an indicator followed by your tippet. He goes, in this case I went straight 4x right off the indicator. And this is a good, good rig for fishing deeper, slower water. This is a little faster than I normally fish it, but I wasn't having any success with a standard rig. So I took this, put some extra weight on, and what it does is it, it creates a, a straight drop off the indicator. Your, your tippet comes straight down. And really what's happening is it just makes a better drift in slower water. And I just think really the key is these fish have been laying underneath the shelf. And we just had to get down to them. And so this is a much longer rig. I'm about 12 feet from indicator to lead. And all of a sudden, we found the fish. Not very big, but boy, he's full of it. There are a wide range of strike indicators available today which come in numerous colors, shapes, sizes, and materials. It is difficult to say one is better than the next, just like comparing fly rods. 
The truth is that the best indicator for you is essentially determined by a combination of conditions and your own developed preferences. Strike indicators are usually available in numerous colors such as red, orange, chartreuse, or yellow, and sometimes even white. As a general rule, the red or orange shades are more visible in bright conditions, and chartreuse or yellow is more visible in low light, such as on an overcast day or at dusk. Experience has proven that under most conditions, white is difficult to see as it blends in with the foam and bubbles and light reflections on the water. Again, let experimentation and practical experience be the guide to what color works best for you. Jeff Blood is an experienced nymph fisherman who loves to angle for steelhead in the tributaries of Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. He's also the creator of some unique products for Gamma Technologies, makers of frog hair products. One of these products is strike indicators. We joined Jeff on a Pennsylvania river where he explained a little about rigging options, how to use the indicators, and most importantly, how to detect a strike using them. Jeff, could you explain a little bit about how we're fishing here, why, you know, why we're fishing here, you know, in terms of where the steelhead are lying, and the rig that you've got set up, because this is really important. And we've talked a lot in the car on the way here about presentation. Could you articulate a little bit about that? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Well, first of all, you want to locate the water that the steelhead like to lie in. And in this particular run, uh, we're fishing ahead of the pool right now. And what we want to do is, uh, this isn't probably the most productive water right here, but you still want to fish it because you never know when the fish are going to move into it and be lying up in the front. Probably down lower down in the pool will have more fish. But what I do as far as um, the stream is all quadranted off and I'll fish close to me like I'm fishing right here in front of me and I'm uh, then going to just keep working it out if you notice I went a few more feet out farther I hit the bottom right there and um, want to bring that through most of the pool see if we can locate some fish now as far as my rig it's a, it's a rig that I fish almost everywhere it's the nine and a half foot leader. It's the uh, uh, two fly rig with a split shot about 18 inches above it. And the indicator I almost always have up uh, at the tip of the fly line. Mm -hmm. And that, that's because I want to get the fly to the bottom before uh, I start to feel anything. And I need, you need to have a little bit of uh, length into the leader. There's a lot of structure that I can feel out there right now because I do have a lot of weight. So I'm, I'm feeling the bottom as well as watching the indicator at the same time. Um, and well, then, actually, can I just stop you for a second? Sure. I think this is a real important point. It's something that you're teaching me a lot about. We're using an indicator. What is it you're looking for? What I'm looking for is any, anything that doesn't look natural. Uh, and, you know, if you look at it from a practical point of view, when you throw anything onto moving water, it should float naturally with that current. And your indicator um, should float natural. Now, if you see a pause or hesitation uh, of any type or with steelhead, a little bit of a twitch because they're a big fish, but they aren't real aggressive uh, in their strikes. And most of the time, uh, what happens is a fly just comes down onto their mouth and they open their mouth and inhale it. So it's, it's actually real subtle. And um, so it's just anything that doesn't look natural. And that's the biggest mistake that a lot of fishermen make is they don't strike when they're actually getting uh, fish taking the line. And therefore, they don't hook up and uh, they have a less productive day of, of fishing. I think we talked about this before that your rule of thumb is if there's any doubt at all, Strike. You get a little flick of the wrist, just set the hook. Exactly, and uh, when I'm teaching young kids, you know, eight to ten years old to fish, they're better uh, students than uh, than most adults because you'll tell them to always strike when it, when the indicator does something that doesn't look normal, and they do that, they strike and they catch more fish oftentimes than the adults do, because the adults overthink it and say, well, no, that was bottom or it was a different type of. Uh, uh, or so, something other than a fish. 
Okay, Colin, if you notice what I'm doing here is I'm stepping forward into the stream, and the reason I'm doing that comes back to that grid uh, approach to the stream where you quadrant it off, and now we're trying to just reach across the current and fish the other side of the pool with a nice natural drift. And uh, the way this pool is right now, and, and the, the way the water's flowing, the fish are probably going to be lying, if they're up here this high, over along that seam that's mm -hmm. on the other side of the bank. Yeah, there'll be some nice current breaks in there. Yes, and, and that seam right there where I'm into now is if there's fish in here, probably where they're going to be lying, maybe just a little closer. Okay. If you stand back and you make the cast from 10 feet back, what you do is you diminish your ability to throw a natural drift. A really good caster can, a uh, good fisherman, but um, what you're now contending with more water, more distance, there's drag in this water down here in front of you as you're fishing. If your line's down on the water like that, you just create instant drag, which is then uh, makes your presentation a lot more, a uh, lot less natural than uh, it needs to be to get the fish to take it. I think it's interesting what you're saying about uh, the approach you take to basically unknown waters. You don't know where the lies are. Right. You have to be very methodical. Uh, that's very much like Atlantic salmon fishing, where you come to a pool you don't know, and you're trying to find where the fish are lying, and it, it's you much systematically like, go through it. It's, it's fishing everywhere, uh, whether it's Atlantic salmon or uh, largemouth bass or, or uh, steelhead or regular rainbow or brown trout. The, uh, the approach has to be, if you don't know the water, you need to learn it. You don't know what kind of hazards are out there as far as snags. So you try, you know, to save as much tackle as you possibly can and learn to pull. Plus, you know, there are ledges on the bottom of these streams. Um, if you've never fished it before, uh, you need to learn where those ledges are because that's where the fish have a tendency to hold. They feel safer. There's normally uh, some type of a, a slower um, impact of the water right there as it's, as it's coming down and, and doesn't tire the fish as much. So I have fished this pool pretty good and we haven't um, hooked anything up. And as you know, there are a lot of fish in the water, so normally if I make uh, 10 or 15 casts and I don't detect a fish in there, I move on to the next pool, which is what I think we ought to do, Colin. Is, okay. Is move now, on do you, one of the things, we're here at the head, we've got somebody in the middle. Do you find the tail of the pools are uh, good environments to check? Yes, they are. The tail of the pools are good, or we might just step down here another 15 or 20 feet okay. before we leave the pool. And, you know, proper etiquette says we give this fisherman enough uh, space so that we don't infringe on his pleasure for the day. Nice fish, Jeff. See, I knew they were going to be here. It's just a matter of where. <laughs> now, in terms of your strike indicator, what did you see? A hesitation, a little slight Actually, uh, I pull? felt that fish. Because the current's so fast out there, uh, I felt the fish strike. Oh, really? Yeah. So he came probably into the faster water to grab it? Yeah. From some yes. slack water? Exactly. You want me to tail that for you? No, I, I can handle it here. I'm okay. just going to, it's not a very big fish, so he's got both of my uh, hooks in him. Here, you want my forceps? Whoop. Oh, beautiful colors, eh? Yeah, he's all tangled up here. Okay. Need this? That's the one he took. Jeez, he's got to uh, almost put that in his eye. Very fat fish, eh? Yeah, they're healthy, aren't they? Jeez. This is one of the things that happens, though. They roll and get the uh, yeah, line around them. Yeah, we fly it. Oh. There you go. There he goes. Outstanding. He, he hammered that, fish, that fly right there. Go ahead, Colin, and okay. show me how to do it. When fly fishing on still waters, Strike indicators can really make a difference in determining whether or not you're going to have a successful day. Certainly strike indicators signal a take, but of more importance on lakes, 
they help suspend offerings, such as bloodworms or woolly buggers, at specific depths. When fish are only feeding in a particular part of the water column, then it is critical to have your fly in that zone. Strike indicators will effectively help you do that. When determining where to place an indicator on your leader, the two most important considerations are depth and water speed. First, try to ascertain where the strike zone is based on water clarity, water temperature, time of day, and species sought. If you don't know, then just start off the bottom. Using indicators makes a lot of sense to most anglers. They're easy to use and understand. They help you detect strikes and most critically, help you drift flies right through a fish's strike zone. This can be particularly significant for selective or lethargic fish. Again, presentation, not your fly, is the most important element. While fly patterns, colors, and sizes make a difference, we believe that presentation is what is critical to your success rate. Using strike indicators will definitely help you catch more fish in different conditions. Good strike indicator to take right in the upper nose. I'll go back to most of his Fortress Lake buddies. We joined veteran fly fisher Phil Rowley on Fortress Lake in beautiful British Columbia, where he taught us some excellent pointers on using strike indicators for still waters. So we're just going to strip the slack out so we're tight to the indicator. That fly right now is on that loop knot, is bobbing in a tantalizing manner, just that marabou tail moving. We're going to look for any unnatural movement, whether it's a pull under or a draw to the right or the left. As the takes of this method are often, they just come up and grab it and slowly pull it under. Now, how did you discover this, uh, Phil? Well, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's become a very popular method in the central part of British Columbia in the early fall for um, fishing when rainbows and, and, other, and trout are actively in the shallows stocking up for winter. Um, but it's my young, my son, my eldest boy Brandon that sort of in a roundabout way got me into this. Um, as I said, this indicator method is great for children and, and, and people that can't cast very well you can cast for them and then just ask them to watch the indicator and when it pulls under they're into a fish. And We had been fishing coronamids and this is the predominant method for using this to suspend that pupa at a certain level right above the bottom when, when trout are really finicky on depth and uh, he was getting bored with that and was uh, after me to change flies and I want to put a leech on and I want to bring you know what it's like when you get in a little debate with your children eventually you want to fish you give in you say okay fine so I put this leech on and threw it out there in about 12 feet of water, same as what we've got here, about 10 feet down. An indicator hadn't hit the water a second, I don't think, and the rings had just gone out of it, and it plunged under, almost leaving a bubble trail. The trout took it so hard, and I thought, thought to myself, hmm, might be onto something here, and it's sort of been in the, uh, in the repertoire ever since. So, Listen to your children, I guess would be the motto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to punch this back into where that... Uh, group of brookies was milling around that we know about. So the wind one makes thing, it a little bit of a challenge, but we can... The one thing that struck me about what this is doing is that uh, you're getting, you're suspending basically a streamer, which is, you know, this you got a yeah. woolly bugger on there yeah. right now, right? Yeah, woolly But you're suspending it, giving it action, but if we're in a place where there's a lot of logs and tangles, this is a great way not to lose flies and yeah. still get at the fish. You put it right in their face. And so many food sources will hover, like uh, freshwater shrimp, scuds, will love to move and then stop and hover and grab something in the water column. And, mm -hmm. and I think that leech acts as a bit of a jig too, going up and down. I just want to pull it 6 to 12 inches, enough to create a bit of a V-wake with that indicator and then let it sit for a couple of seconds. And what we've got here is with, with this cross drift, we can actually wind drift this leech and I don't really have to impart little or any motion on the fly. I'm getting Mother Nature to do it all, and it's a great method 
um, to cover water with an almost static presentation, just drift it. Just like uh, drifting a nymph on a stream. Yeah. Very similar, you get this nice... I've never system. seen this used anywhere, and I'm just thinking of some places I know uh, in eastern Canada and the United States where this would be just absolutely deadly. I mean, for bass as well oh, as for trout. Anything that, you know, suspends its structure. I'm going to take advantage, recast here. Mm -hmm. so we've got just a wonderful cross dress going here, and I can just sweep this down, just like on a river. Actually put a little mend in it, because we want to be tight to the fly. And just let that wind... Same mending principles. You want to move the fly line in such a way that you don't move the indicator or a dry fly if you're fishing on a, on a river. Mm -hmm. And just let that drift down, just like a leech that's sort of going with the natural drift in the lake. And that's the key. They're not moving real fast. No. Nope. But they're moving. That's right. And they have that action. Yeah, the mar rabbit, marabou, so many of those soft materials that are available to us as fly tires are just wonderful materials for still water flies. There, there we go. Fish on. Of course, that method works too. <laughs> Strip leads, yeah. I think, yeah. We've been having good success in pretty much everything yeah. today. Well, this is uh, when you have these magic moments when you're still water fishing, this is the time to experiment and see if they'll work. So when you get those tough days and you got to really work and, and uh, do your detective work, which is typically most days, this is a pretty special place. Of course, um, never hurts yeah. to be with an expert fly fisher like you, uh, <laughs> Well, thanks, Bill. Cole. And I'll tell you, I've learned so much in just the last couple hours from you. And still water fishing is one of those things that, especially for people in the east, um, they don't know a lot about. It's, it's really considered a western thing, and yet the fact is... It's lakes worldwide. Yep, uh, that's it, exactly. Yeah. And I know some great trout lakes, and people don't know how to fish them. I mean, the common thing to do is to troll for, yeah. for the trout, you know, with a, a fly, and even with a kit, kick boat, and going out and letting the... Uh, fly go behind you and you just basically, mm -hmm. you're basically well, trolling. You are, you're moving, and that works, but and it, it's very effective. Um, but uh, most people come to a lake and they're a little intimidated. It's featureless, it's, you know, flat, not much in the way of clues. A river has a lot of character to it. In some ways, uh, you can, you know, you can walk across it. Um, it seems a little more manageable. When you come to a lake that's, uh, you know, like this one, five, five plus miles long, and almost a mile or two wide, that's a pretty daunting piece of water to, to look at. And go, where do I go from here? Okay, now, let's just pop this out. There we go. Put my hand, water is cold. Yes, it is, 48 degrees. Okay, I'm just gonna go like this. Oh. You got them? Nope, missed them. There's definitely a pocket of them, just downwind from the boat. And it's oh, there he goes. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to learn more about our series, then please join us on the internet at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get all of our weekly uploads.